Hey, so I'm sitting here with uh, the writers of the episode you just watched, uh, Monkey in a Box, episode 811. We got uh, Wendy West over here. Hello. Dub Dub. I thought you were calling Tim Monkey in a Box for a moment. Oh, no, no. (laughs) Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there to Tim's Monkey in a Box. Don't worry. That's (laughs) right. And Tim Schlotman. Yes. Yes. Tim's blushing. Tim, Tim, who's been here, he's been on the show since the very beginning. Day. Yes, that's why I'm hunched over the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the burden that the, has been the thrust curvature, upon him. The curvature of the spine. I mean, my spine was just like a Christmas tree, just perfect and straight. <laughs> Ramrod. <laughs> yeah, and now it's this. <laughs> if only, if only uh, Internet Land could see this. Yeah. Yeah, they would. They would. They would love it. They should have, you know, given us more oranges in the writers' room so <laughs> the scurvy, scurvy. Wouldn't, wouldn't kick in. We get the pirate disease. Yeah. Arr. Arr. <laughs> um, why the title "Monkey in a Box"? Yes, Tim. Well, <laughs> this was behind the scenes. Was this was like a big battle for a title, right? I mean, there was sev- yeah. several different titles that were going on. Yeah, and but, was a but title this... that was not. And Wendy, on. Wendy was just like fighting it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that. No, I don't like it. No, I, I, the the bad one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like no, that I, I, you know, it, it, it's uh, like I think many. The title was eight eleven. Actually, yeah, <laughs> just eight eleven. Yeah, eight eleven. Eight eleven. You know, a lot of times our, our titles for episodes, you know, come from something that's within the episode, a line right. of dialogue, and and uh, this particular episode has a, a very special guest star uh, in the form of a sock monkey. Yep, yep. And yep. Uh, but you yeah. called it monkey in the box because because. Um, as you saw in the episode, yeah. um, Dexter did the unthinkable. He put Harrison's monkey in a box, yeah, and yeah. Harrison did not uh, take kindly to that. You was never it, put a monkey in a was box. Was it sort of like an allegory for the episode, too, like the, part uh, of the thematic uh, message of it? I think a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, you could say that Dexter's had a, a monkey on his back uh, yeah. you know, this whole journey. And, uh, you know, certainly we see uh, Dexter, you know, literally boxing up his life. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been in Miami, we've been in that apartment for, for eight seasons. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't think a lot of people thought that, uh, we would see this character being, um, you know, willing to move on and yeah. get rid of the apartment and get rid of the boat and, um, quit his job and leave the only place that he's called home. Um, something he was very unwilling to do last season. Absolutely. Like he yeah. Wanted, he wanted, he wanted everything. Yeah. And- yeah. Now he's become maybe uh, a little too human, you know, in his in his responsibilities and in his uh, attitudes toward other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, certainly, you know, not only is he leaving behind you know the the city, but he's also leaving behind Deb. Yeah, and um, you know, that's on the surface appears to be a good thing for both of them. Yeah, a lot of people. It's funny. A lot, a lot of the response I've gotten on uh, on Twitter. A lot of times, people are very upset. Like, why would Dexter ever leave Deb? Wow. Yeah, that's his one true love, and it's yeah. like, well, no, he can't do the things with Deb that he could do with Hannah. Yeah, well, the sexy things. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that, that was a different season. <laughs> we were never going to go there. Nope. Just to be clear. True. Um, very true. Um, but. The fact that you know, if you if you love something, you can set it free, and and I think, you know, as as a good brother, um, yes, he wants to be with Hannah, but I think on some level he was also realizing that this is the the best thing for Deb to not have to compromise herself, to not yes. have to be burdened by working in the same building in you know the same homicide department with someone she knows is killing people, and how can she ever be a cop again if she comes back into the job with that burden so we sort of led to that final that sort of final moment for dexter when he's standing above he's standing above this guy and uh the uh, saxon mm-hmm. and and normally he's got his knives out everything's all ready he normally feels this giant need yeah and um you know it doesn't and you know it's the penultimate chapter of yeah. not only our season but the series yeah. and you know, we've talked about this before in, in previous podcasts that, you know, I, I think sometimes it's really easy to to take a look at, at a particular episode of Dexter and, you know, dissect it and forget the bigger picture. And, you know, that's something that, that you know, I think we've all, you know, kind of prided ourselves on is that our storytelling is, yes, micro in terms of a season, uh, an arc, an episode, but also 
when you think of the biggest picture that we've been telling, uh, which is the series and yeah. and the journey that this character, you know, has actually been on for, you know, eight years. There's been um, a couple a, a few purposeful reflections. Absolutely. Of, you know, like uh, even down to when, when they when they trapped uh, Saxon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Laying in bed mm-hmm. is a little bit just like the way he mm-hmm. caught Rudy. Mm hmm. Yeah. But with uh, this time, his sister's helping out. You know, uh, Wendy wrote a beautiful scene where, you know, Saxon is on the kill table. And uh, what is Saxon talking about, you know, in terms of Miami and, and why he likes it here and yeah. why he wants to stay here? It's the exact same reasons that, uh, you know, Dexter used to have for, mm-hmm. for wanting to stay. And now he's, he's willing to shed all of that and let it go. He's realizing I've changed, so he's changed so much. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and to have the final scene be him, you know, exiting his apartment, <coughs> as we call back to the title sequence. Right. You know, is a marker of, you know, mm-hmm. coming full circle in so many ways. Yeah. And, and you know, as, as, a, as a character, as a construct, you know, that, that's what, you know, the, the character of, of Oliver Saxon is, is doing for us. It's allowing Dexter to reflect off of someone that he used to be. And he's not that person anymore. And, you know, that's what this really this whole season, uh, this eighth season has been about is is Dexter, you know, kind of realizing that what he used to be um, doesn't really exist anymore. Mm. And yet he's sort of hoping to get away with it all scot free. Yeah. Scot free. Hello, you Scott. Know, hello, I'm Scott <laughs> and I'm scot free. Uh, but he's hoping he's hoping to get away with everything. Yeah. And think that there'll be no repercussions, that everything's yeah. going to be fine, that everything's going to be. Yeah. Just and hunky dory. How and often does that work out in life? Yeah, especially when you've got you know a few hundred and twenty three bodies under your belt. Mm. But that's, I mean, that, again, that's that's the beauty of this character is is uh, he the has Michael C. He brought to it. He's yeah, yeah he's, he's been Michael this C. He? Michael uh, C. Hall. Mm-hmm. He's been this you know unreliable narrator the whole time, and sometimes you know he's he's fooling the audience, and and you know for the most part, um, because he lacks the skills to really self reflect self-reflect he's fooling himself and that's something that that the audience knows and he doesn't know and so this this whole journey he's been on um of trying to you know have it all to think that you know he can he can leave um you know everything behind um you know a real you can find love with all this death behind him and and in this episode uh, specifically He's leaving Harry behind. That that he no longer feels that he has to have a conversation with his dead father. That that that's how far he's come from when we first met him in season one. That's sort of uh, over the past couple episodes. His, his father's been Harry's been the person saying no, no. Remember disapproving, you, disapproving, yeah. right? Because you are so. a serial killer. You yeah. are. That is what you do. I raised you know yeah. you were raised to be someone that kills bad people. Because you have this ho- you have this horrible need inside of you to do this, and that's uh, again that's but it's still Dexter, you know. Yeah. It's, it's there's no ghost. It's no. it's you know the wait he, he, wait no what uh, yeah um, oh. a spoiler uh, this whole time <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah it's you know it's it's easy to forget that that yes these conversations that Dexter has had with Harry uh, over this over the years is really conversations he's been having with himself. He's and like sort of struggling to survive in some mm-hmm. ways. And it's it's people. you know it's the part of his brain that that does know the truth that you know um, does realize that maybe this isn't quite the way I should go and and how things are going to work out. Another another fun moment in this episode I thought because there's I mean obviously there was probably more uh, things we would have loved to have brought back in. I mean, over eight years and all. Calling back, you mean? Calling yeah. back to, uh, sure. uh, Sylvia, Sil, uh, Sil, Sil Prado, Prado, right? Who yeah. was the, uh, so great of her to do this. Yeah. It's great, right? Yeah. She's going to be on the following. How funny, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Funny. Wow. Um, just but everything. yeah, but bringing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but she's, uh, th- th- to me, that was sort of fun also. Cause it it harkens back to the fact that Dexter really is a, Still, is pretty much a psychopath. Like the audacity to call up the person when you killed their husband <laughs> and yeah. left him in a yeah, left him in a graveyard, it's very and then to say, "Hey, why don't though. you come sell my house?" Yeah, just I don't very, know anybody very else. Dexter, very practical. Yeah, he doesn't understand that that's like a bad effect. idea. Yeah. yeah, and and you know certainly we wanted to uh, you know give the audience some 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 little Easter eggs along the way to just remind you again how long Dexter's been on this journey. Uh, the things that uh, he's encountered, you know, over the years that that we can call back, um, 
the hurricane, even, even yeah. to the, mm-hmm. the name of the hurricane. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's not uh, just by accident. Mm-hmm. Hurricane Laura. Mm-hmm. Hurricane Laura. Because everything just keeps floating back. Back so, to mother. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really and he starts with his mother's blood on his hands. Right, you know, this right. episode does. Yeah, yeah. he's he's in yeah. a pool of his mother's blood. Yeah. In this case, you know, his 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 spiritual mother, but um he can't escape it. Can't uh, escape it. And um he's trying. He's he's trying as hard as he can. Yeah. I hope that's I hope that's satisfying. I there's this is going to sound so pretentious, but there's this um T.S. Eliot poem which is it talks about how the, the end. I know it's about. It's in a Tim book. Tim fell asleep. See, there are things called books in the world. Oh my god, so books. good. I know. Tim will make you a picture book someday <laughs> of monkeys. But um, it, you know, it talks about how the end of all of our exploring will be to return to where we started and to know the place for the first time. And at some level, it feels like this episode was t- was was aiming to do that. And hopefully, it's a satisfying. You know, experience for the audience to to see to see Dexter doing familiar things in brand new ways. Right. The the beginning, the the end with the uh, calling back to the title sequence. Um, hopefully, it's to show that you know the journey he's taken for the series is coming to a, a conclusion he had hoped for for so long, which is to be real, to be in love, to be human. You know, to of be course, a real to, have life it, to be a real life boy. Yeah. Exactly right, and to only have it. You know, we tell the audience so many horrible things are actually happening that it's a another fool's errand another fool's wish to believe it you know mm-hmm. yeah he has no idea as he's leaving that apartment at the end of the episode just just what's happened and, yeah and uh, because of his attempt to be more human to mm-hmm. give his sister what she what she wanted and what he wanted and what he too. wanted too yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to go away with, yeah. with hannah but also like to know that if i if i kill this guy my sister knows all about it and this, she's got to sort of live with this yeah. thing and so she sort of tried to give that to her too i wonder if it's the so, last goodbye they've ever said I don't know. Just wondering. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> mm. My, you're cryptic. Mm. Um, no, there'll be, there'll be plenty of steaks and beer in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming you know Deb goes to Argentina. I love the, I love that that part where she's in in the, in the uh, apartment. I don't know which one of you guys did that, but the uh, in the apartment that, when that she's like, uh, "We're gonna have uh, tacos." Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll go there and we'll have tacos and beer. And he's like, "I think we have steaks. It's Argentina." <laughs> it's Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's quite a journey she's had. Oh my God! Yeah, um, she really brought it. I think Tim, this you wrote my favorite Deb scene. I was thinking back on the the series, and I, you know that scene after Lundy's been shot, and she's gone back, and she's in her bathrobe, and it's you know it's season four, it's episode five of season four, and she's just standing there, and she's like, I'm broken. And I remember watching that, and it was so great to read it, but it was so, I mean, she just did, just was amazing. Yeah, in that I scene, mean, you know. That, you, We've kind of, you know, again, we've, because we've done so many podcasts and, you know, talked about so many things about, you know, this series and, and you know, what's made this experience uh, really, you know, stand out is you can write a scene like that. And, in and it's te- a good scene. And, it's a really great scene. But and it's, then, it just, it, it wow. lives on the, on the page. Right. And then. And then there's Jennifer. And then there's and Jennifer Michael too, and Michael. Yeah. And, and. Receiving so much and, in that and scene. And Keith Carradine. Right? Yeah. And, and. He wasn't in that scene. Um. But he directed it though. <laughs> but the I, but the idea oh, wait, no, no, of just I'm, I'm looking at you like I'm just like nodding like, like no, okay, Gordon, but I'm I don't thinking, think so. No, 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 no. no, it was Keith I Gordon. Just, I gave you the party nod. Like no, you're at a party, you're like it, nodding. Right? No, it's Keith Gordon. Yeah. Keith Gordon. I'm, I'm, I'm saying episode. Keith Carradine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, London, and London. also gonna be and, the following. No way. And John Lith. I mean, I'm just talking about you know the actors that have 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 graced our series and you know just what what they bring to a scene and, and what's on the page and then it comes alive. And as my intent with that scene was, yes, to, to show how um, Deb feels inside, which is I'm broken. Um, it doesn't matter what I do. It's so true. And, so honest, and yeah. then to see how she interpreted, you know, those words and, and, and found, um, a level of despair. Yeah. Uh, it's just I mean, painful to watch. You know, I, I I couldn't write on the page how she's supposed to cry. You know, uh, and the fact that she went to this place of just you know a, a total breakdown, and you know it. That's how people cry. You know that, yeah, yeah. that it was just. Um, it reminded me of a, a scene that Michael did in season two, also directed by Keith Gordon, uh, when he's confronting the the man who killed his mother mm. in the in the bar. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Um, 
you know, again, it, it was all written out, but the way Michael uh, just interpreted it mm-hmm. and went with it mm-hmm. and um, took it to places that, that I didn't even think, you know, was possible or wasn't my in, intent um, in terms of, of, you know, how the scene played out. It, it's just is always the, the fun part of what we do is, yeah. sure, you know, we're in a room all together <laughs> putting together the stories and you go off and you, and you write it. Um, but the real joy is then to, to see how it is interpreted by the director and, and the actors and, and what the, the final result is. So wow. what was uh, – Well, let's do a round – well, let's do a round table. Okay. Okay. So, Including Rob G. Oh, yeah, of course. Sure. So, in fact, let's let's just put Rob G on the spot. Let's put right Rob away. G on the spot. Oh, my God. Favorite moment over the past eight that. years. Look at you saying we have more time left. Favorite moment? Uh, let's or see. episode or whatever. Honestly, uh, I'm going to go back to season five when mm. Dexter hooks up with Lumen, which is an episode you wrote. I think right. it's ten. Yeah, yeah. The very, they go on a kill together. And when, uh, when they're in bed and uh, he says, in her eyes, I'm not a monster at all. It's my favorite moment. Should we talk about the moment that got cut out of that, which is also fun to see? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah we what did actually. Cut have, out? We did Maybe have like Scott a wants to talk where, about uh, that. At the kill, Lumen was standing above him and uh, above the guy on the table. Her uh-huh. first, her the first rapist, kill. The rapist, her yeah. first kill. This guy yeah. that raped, you know, did all this awful stuff to her. And uh, she stands above with a knife and she. Uh, she's nervous. S- she's nervous. It's the first time and she brings it down onto his chest, but it doesn't, it doesn't pierce the, uh, oh. the uh, chest plate. And so it's sort of stuck in there. Suddenly so the guy's like, ah, ah. <laughs> And Dexter goes up to him, like, oh, let me help you with this. And she's like, no, no, I got it. And she gets up on top and straddles him, wrestles the knife out and plunged it all the way in. Wow. But it might have been, I don't know. A bit much? <laughs> Some people thought it was maybe a bit much. Wow. <laughs> and I actually, thought it was pretty, I thought it like broke, it felt real. And, yeah. It felt and, real. And it was fun to watch Dexter be very concerned. I will never forget but, after that moment, I went on your Facebook and said, Sky, you almost brought me to tears tonight. And your response was, wuss. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Because <laughs> well, I'm a man. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, thanks. Try to pay you a compliment and that's what I get. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm crying. What about Tim? you guys? Um, I can't remember if all of this made it onto screen, but um, there was a moment in season four with Michael and John Lithgow. Right. And um, Lithgow uh, wasn't scripted, uh, just decides to throw in an impromptu little dance. Oh, no, that was scripted. That was scripted. And, uh, that was scripted. Oh, was it? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pushed, you wrote it. I wrote that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now I really feel like a dick. greatest thing ever. Yeah. No, no, because no, I, I was like, oh, I see it in my head, but can he do it? Can uh, Will he do it? Go and do then it. he far exceeded. That was going to be my favorite, too. Yeah. Like, I, I, remember watching, I remember watching the dailies, like, afraid, thinking it's not going to work out. Yeah. And it's, then... And, and look on Dexter, and you know, and and again, when you look back at eight seasons, ninety six episodes, you know, uh, sometimes it's hard to remember, you know, things that we had only talked about in the room yep. that never made it to page, or things that were on the page that never made it into the yeah, episode yeah. for you know editing reasons. Yeah. Um, but I just remember when we had our rap party, and and they had that up, uh, that moment, and you it made you, it into a gif, yeah. A GIF. So cool. Oh man, uh, and Michael's expression was just uh, you know Trying again just not to laugh. just two two great actors just having having yeah. a ball, um, and and you know I know when um, and this was Wendy's episode from from that season the Thanksgiving uh, yes episode to hear the actors you know recall that day of filming that they don't know if it was the turkey, uh, but it was just it was such a intense family dinner that when they would yell cut uh they had to just be able to kind of you know go to a silly goofy place uh just to kind of you know burn all that negative energy off and the weirdness off and and uh and i i know individual actors who have talked about that day and just what that day was like uh and just being able to you know uh kind of uh shed it um you know, in between takes because it was. It was just the, the most crazy, weirdest, you know, family gathering, um, you know, I think television has seen. Yeah. My favorite rest. moment is, um, oh, it's Dexter killing Rudy. It was just so, it was so painful. And I thought they, those two actors could not have been better. It was just so hard. For, I felt like it was so hard for Dexter to do that. And just, I just, 
I thought it was everything the show. That to me was like exactly what the show is. Like here's a killer who has to kill his brother, the person he least wants to kill. Slit his Perhaps throat. other than Deb, obviously. Yeah. yeah so that was another little reflection then with the yeah yeah when, he, that's when right. uh, uh, Vogel was killed by Saxon right. slit the throat. Yeah yeah. His family slitting each other's throats. And yeah, mine I, it was it was going to be that little dance. Yeah. Like well, then that you thing. Have, Scott, you have to give us your second favorite. Yeah, that's right. Your favorite. second favorite. That's good. We're going to go, like, keep going down, like, a third, fourth, (laughs) fifth. Soon people just, like, click. Turn off. Um, uh, You know, uh, Rita Dine. And by the way. such a, such a, (laughs) such a, there's a picture of Rita in my office. You have to take a picture of that. (laughs) Post it on Twitter. Um, But that, I I feel like uh, it was one of those, one of those moments where everybody was caught off guard. Like, people said they felt gut punched. Yeah. Yeah. You know. The the thing I remember about that, um, was you know we had to keep it top secret and right. and you know, we all knew it was on the page, um, but when it was shot and how it was shot and, and what happened to the footage uh, to make sure that the secret didn't get out, uh, you know none of us had seen that until it aired yeah. that night, and so um, yeah we knew what was coming, but until we actually saw it, I mean I f- was I felt like I I was you know one of the members of the audience you know watching something for the first time and and. Yeah, that that image of of her in that bathtub, and there was a shot of the the wedding ring, the engagement yeah. ring. Um, it just you know, oh my God, you know, her her dreams were just brutally, horribly snuffed out by by Lithgow, and oh. and what's crazy also about that that uh-huh. particular episode and that that season was it was a, a really a harbinger of where we were going to go. Yeah. Uh, with the series is that that in a in a very prophetic way, uh, Lithgow said something to Dexter, which was, "It's over, and you don't even realize it." Yep. You know, and um, I think that's you know been a, a big drive to to the, the last season of Dexter. Of, so the last two, like he keeps yeah. thinking it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right, and, and it, his sister gets shot, and together you just go free. Yeah, yeah. Who uh, knows what will happen next in episode. The final episode of Dexter yeah. forever and ever. You know what? I wish you could. I mean, maybe this is a bad idea, but I'd be so interested to hear on a podcast because I think all the writers had just, you know, random thoughts over the years about how it might end. And I definitely think we ended in the right place. But it'd be fun to hear, like, like what are the crazy pitches we went through for the end of the show? Like, after after it airs, you know? Like, that would be crazy. Because I'm, yeah. I'm always so interested. All you got to like, do is go to Twitter. Yeah. You go oh, to really? Twitter. Everybody. What everybody is this go, Twitter? Everybody goes, at, yeah. Well, what what's this, up, Grandma? What is this Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, everybody's got, like, tons of ideas. Everybody's fun. forwarding them off That's to fun. me, shooting them off. I yeah. Want, yeah, I'd love to hear, hear those. But who would have, uh, you know, when you think about think back to you know when the show began and um you know there'd never been a show like this you know on television um i was talking to kevin williamson today i mean i'm you know i'm, I'm now writing for this uh, for the following super cool and uh he was he was uh commenting about how dexter changed everything like sopranos made it so that huh tv could be like this yeah. but but dexter was the one who said there there uh, you know a serial killer could be a hero yeah yeah or not a hero but like a protagonist there's someone you care about and that's true and that you'd want to live in that world of a serial killer for season after season episode after episode and 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 now you know eight years later uh you can't escape serial killers on television you know that that what was once so controversial you know as as a series and the idea behind the series uh, is now just kind of well, okay, uh, and I think you know uh, certainly our show you know opened that door uh, certainly you know with Michael C Hall's performance, um, but I remember you know when the first season aired, um, a lot of people had heard about Dexter but weren't watching it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to watch a show about a serial killer. I don't like that kind of stuff. It's horrible. It's yeah, scary. and 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 they had a preconceived notion of what the show was was and. And then uh, we, the writers, went on strike, um, and uh, CBS put the first season, you know, uh, on Sunday nights, and the ratings were uh, fantastic. The problem was is they couldn't get advertisers to want to be associated with a show about a serial killer. Sort and now, <laughs> again, you, you look, you know, um, look forward from that, that moment, you know, seven and a half, eight years later, and, you know, it's, it's no big deal, you know. Yeah. Um, 
you you can have a show like the following, uh, and mm-hmm. you have you can have advertisers advertising a program like that, and and, and, and all those, yeah, yeah. the killing, um, and it's um, the, you know, it's it's, it's certainly a, a, just a, yeah. a different world, yeah. uh, and I think you know Dexter kind of helped usher usher that in. Um, in Mike, many ways. Michael said on the last night when we wrapped and we wrapped him and they and it's such a big deal when they say it's a wrap on Michael C. Hall and Ooh. it's like holy cow and uh, he said you know that you know architects build bridges and and you know people build cat I mean he was talking about architecture you, you build something that lands that stands the test of time and how the show is something that we have built and that um, you know no one can take away from us and it was such a interesting. I thought it was perfectly said, you know, how this is something we've all created and we all have, you know, we always will have it for as, you know, temporal as it is, you know. And I'm I'm so thankful to have gotten to work with you guys and to have been a part of it and thankful for Clyde for hiring yeah, me yeah, and yeah. just so, I mean, I think it's so rare to have this opportunity, this crazy family that I think we even had, you know, and it was just yeah. so, I'm so thankful for that, yeah. you know. It's really, it's very, very lucky, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 um, such a unique experience to be on a television show because, you know, not only is it, you know, just a bunch of writers in a room, but then it just starts to expand to the actors, the crew, uh, the people at Showtime. Uh, and then, of course, it goes all the way out to the fans. Yeah. And, you know, when a show's on the air for as long as we've been on the air, you know, it, it does have a sense of, you know, kind of family to it that, that, you know, you have literally let, you know, kind of let people into your, into your creative home every week, uh, to watch what it is that, that, that we do in terms of, you know, crafting story and coming up with, with, you know, interesting, uh, takes on this, on this character. And, and, uh, you know, certainly fans, you know, uh, they'll, uh, in the best way, you know, grasp on to a series and it kind of becomes theirs. Yeah. So what starts off as, you know, something that's very insular to us in a writer's room, uh, all of a sudden becomes a little bit bigger and more global. And then you have these other people that also feel that they're a part of it. And because they are, because they've accepted it. They are. And, and, and that I think is what, you know, Wendy really was touching upon is that, um, to be on a series like Dexter, that not only was telling you know a, a really compelling, interesting story about this 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 character who just happened to be a serial killer, um, and to be able to do that creatively and then have other people get it and respond to it and um, where a show sometimes will only be a critical hit, uh, it's just a hit with the the critics, or a show will just be a hit with the general audience and and to me that's what has been so unique and special about the Dexter experience is that we found a way to kind of bridge the two so we did have the critical acclaim we did have this incredibly wonderful loyal you know fan base that that made the experience what it is and so when you meet people uh yeah. who find out what it is that you do and what you work on like um, when you give them your card? Well, sometimes. Tim? But, uh, <laughs> if you're wearing a hat. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes, sometimes you get people who are like, man, you ruined everything. But <laughs> yeah. that's also, but that, it's there, it's, it's yours also. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, and, um, it's, it is what it is. It is. And, it's a beautiful thing. And yes, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's rare, you know, that uh, you get one of those in a career. You know, hopefully yeah. there's more. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that's, that to me is, is, um, what this experience has been, uh, what's made it so special is that, um, yeah, we all worked on something that, that resonated with the culture, you know, to the point where, you know, now Dexter Morgan is considered a solution to modern day, you know, problems and ills. Kind of there like, you go, kind of man. Itself. Yeah. It's yeah. quite a, quite a run. It's been an honor beyond all honors to work with you guys. I've loved every same, minute of it. It's been same. a lot of fun. A lot of, uh, a lot of, I'm not crying. That was just something. Like, oh, okay. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Who's uh, the worst? A lot of arguing. I'm yeah. not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> he was crying. <laughs> Got allergies. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> that was a tear. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for talking thanks about for this and our us. whole, our yeah. whole uh, eight years experience. Yeah. Golly, eight. I and look at, I look at your daughter, and I think. I mean, I just saw pictures of when yeah. you started the show, and now she's. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Grew up under yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. My son, uh, Zane's uh, drawings of. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Showed yeah. up again. 
fun. Yeah, and, and, and you know, all the stuff. Uh, to be able to also you know do that you know creatively is is you know you 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 bring some so many personal you know uh, things from your own life you know into a, a creative process like this. The that, women under your deck. Well, I was th- I was thinking more along the lines that that uh, you know we got to go to my hometown in oh, yeah, Nebraska. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah, written by Wendy West. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, why she wrote that episode, I still have no Just idea. To make you it, was, angry. it was my hometown. Just to make you that's angry. the crazy of it, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We that's get assigned. That's actually why. Yeah, we actually we actually yeah. get assigned at the question. top of the year, and so you never really know what's going to happen. Yeah. And suddenly, yeah, Wendy takes over Carney, Nebraska. But but yeah. literally, we're like, where where could they go of all places? Yeah. And it was like, what would make Tim the angriest? No, <laughs> no, that that was not. <laughs> Let's go to Carney. Who's heard of Carney? I'm really not Tim that angry. Oh, I'm really, really? He's, he's very calm. Yeah, man. unless you cut me off in traffic. But look, the veins back. <laughs> Because you're driving me insane. <laughs> Why won't she shut up? It's, oh, wait. What, it's, I haven't heard that voice in a long the, time. <laughs> welcome to the writer's room. That's how, that's how, that's how it went down. Yeah. Every yeah. moment. Well, there it is. Uh, episode 811, it's Monkey in a Box. It's not going to happen again and again. It's going to happen one more time. again. Right, right. Yeah. And up next, we get, we're, uh, we're actually going to talk to, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, Yvonne. Nice. Stryker. Stryker. Uh, Yvonne Stryker. Stryker. I still call her that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talking about uh, her her experience, it's pretty it's pretty good. She's pretty great. She's pretty yeah. great, and um, she's looks a lot pretty. better than all of us combined, <laughs> except for Wendy. Wendy, Aww. that's a nice note to end on. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, guys. Well, thank you, Thanks, Scott. Scott. Thanks, and Rob. thank you, Rob. So we're sitting here with uh, Hannah, a.k.a. Yvonne Stryker. <laughs> oh, God. Yvonne Stryker. Yvonne, Yvonne Strahovski. Wow. I thought you got my name wrong for a second there. <laughs> when you went Yvonne, I went, <gasps> nuts. Uh-oh. No, that was, that was like, it was a callback to last uh, last podcast yeah. when you said that people were suggesting maybe you change your name to Yvonne Stryker. Mm, named after a porn star. S T R Y K E R. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you and you said no. <laughs> yeah. Why? I'm gonna I stick should've... with this. <laughs> yeah. Should have said yes. Um, holy smokes! What a season. Mm. You've uh, uh, done some uh, crazy things this season. Starting off with uh, what a what a great introduction to you in uh, episode six. Well, I would say the craziest thing is that I'm still sitting here, <laughs> and that I've That's made true. it made it this far, so yeah. far, this, so far. Yeah, till... through through eleven, monkey in a box. Mm-hmm. This is we're, we're we're pairing this up with episode eight, eleven, monkey in a box. Yeah. You are not the monkey in the box. I don't think that's what it was talking about. No, no, no. That would be the joke. The joke would be on me if it was. Cause I <laughs> didn't know. Yes. Um. So, uh, you know, season seven ends. Rather dramatically, with uh, with a, a, a flower that you left, a black black orchid, black yeah. orchid. Yeah, I think. Um, it's what very, do you think that meant? I'm, I, you know, I think it was a threat, a watch out. <laughs> uh, it's complicated, though. It's, I mean, yeah. they fell in love, and and the feelings went deep, and and the relationship was pretty special in that yeah. they both kill people and, uh, and they're fine just, with it <laughs> and they're fine with it but you know i think now coming back into it i think you know hannah's intentions are initially to you know not be very nice and sort of blackmail him into doing something for her that she is unable to do you know right. get rid of miles because she's a different killer she's not she's not like dexter at she all she doesn't like it yeah, yeah. she she doesn't she 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 doesn't enjoy it. She doesn't want to do it. I think the only reason she's done it is because she's justified it in her head that, you know, these people are interrupting her life or she's trying to build a life for herself and these people are getting in the way. So um, I think she realizes that that plan of blackmailing Dexter isn't really going to work out considering all the feelings that she still has for him, which is sad still yeah. because they, knowing, you know, they've, they've come up with this whole plan yeah. of what they're going to do, where they're going to go. And, and this, it's, it's this beautiful image of, you know, two people and a child in an exotic country. And yeah. then, but you wonder with so many, I mean, <laughs> trust issues and <laughs> things that would, you know, once the honeymoon period is over and once they've settled and once the, the fun has sort of run out, 
yeah. when the cogs of the relationship have to start kicking in, then what is, what would really happen post Argentina? You know, yeah. a year post I Argentina. Think it'd work out. I think so. I don't yeah. I, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just think it would. You know, I think they need a lot of couples therapy. <laughs> they, that's true. <laughs> because that is true. I mean, he put her in prison, and <laughs> she tried to kill his sister. It's just yeah. there's so much mess. But I guess the the two of them live in, in in a world where everything is so heightened all the time that that sort of that sort of is <laughs> that's oddly that's the norm for, uh, yeah, for the two of them. You know, I guess like so. it's not. I have a feeling uh, uh, open caps at a to- on, on toothpaste wouldn't be as big of a problem. Right, yeah. Though I mean, maybe, who knows? Maybe Dexter. He's a little, he's a little uh, anal retentive around his, his apartment. Yeah, I mean, I guess for Hannah, it's kind of, well, is there, there's not going to be anyone better, is there? Yeah. He clearly understands her and, um, and because of who he is. Yeah. And she doesn't have to, he knows the entire backstory and her backstory and she doesn't have to sort of go into it with anyone new. If she met somebody new, it would just be a whole new, yeah. you know, starting from scratch. And that's really it's that hard. acceptance, that sort of unconditional thing that, that right. the two of them have, which is great. But uh, in, in episode six, there is not unconditional anything. It's such a great uh, reveal. The D- Deb and Dexter finally sort of bonding again things are sort of working out all of a sudden <laughs> deborah gets a little sleepy mm-hmm. falls over dexter falls over and as he as he looks across the room in walks hannah sort of slow motion yeah saying what do you say like uh, remember me remember me yeah yeah <laughs> and then and then everybody in the room goes ah! oh my god <laughs> yeah she's bad <laughs> yeah and is dexter who's is someone gonna die i mean that's sort of the fun of, of a final season, that at any moment... I mean, th- there was a point when we were, when we were uh, sort of breaking what is Hannah's story that uh, there was a point where we were going to have Hannah kill Deb. We were, we were like, honestly talking about, about that. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. And then God. as Deb goes down, she was going to, like, shoot you. <laughs> it was like this all crazy Holy thing. Holy like, crap. That would have been amazing. And then we went... Well, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's the fun of that's the fun of the writers' room. It's, we we play a lot of uh, what if this happened? Do you what role if, play? Yeah, do you have uh, plastic guns in there? Yeah, and I, I usually do the New Zealand accent. Oh, the no, New Ze- Australian. No, Australian, where are you from? Australian. No, you're New Zealand. Where are you from? Australia. Yeah, Australia. You said New Zealand. Oh, you can't get out of it now. I know. I did. It's recorded. Sorry. I don't know why I thought you were a Kiwi. <laughs> well, my accent is a little messed up. Is it? Well, a little. No? Okay. I don't know. Well, you yeah. thought it was New Zealand. Well, I, I, Somebody yesterday thought I was South African. Really? That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You just play, just roll along with it? Yeah, that was me in Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's I've stayed st- remarkably young. <laughs> it's my starring role in Blood Diamond. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, so next, Dexter, what's fun is Dexter wakes up. Has no idea in episode seven. Has no idea what the heck is going on. Mm. And it's fun too because at that point Dexter has this uh, has Zach Hamilton. That's right. He's got yes. This, this little uh, this this not, he's not that little. He's actually pretty tall. But he's got Sam Underwood mm-hmm. there, and he's sort of committed to training him. And and suddenly Dexter's swept way off course. Yes. By Hannah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then we we discover Hannah's new life of and, what she's yeah. sort of created for herself with this uh miles character who yeah. uh, is her husband how's that working with julian sands he's he's pretty he's pretty did you did, yeah you had a couple scenes with him yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah more than a scene. big yeah. scene yeah. yeah well i stabbed him <laughs> <laughs> i would say that's a big that's scene, a big scene. <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> uh yeah i didn't i didn't actually expect uh a scene like that in this season, yeah. Uh, I didn't expect to be sort of getting all into a bloody mess, killing somebody again, again. Uh, yeah, I guess very reminiscent of her her uh, kill when she was fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, that was, it was a really it was all about sort of putting her in this in this moment where where she does need Dexter, right? Where yeah. she's sort of helpless. That was a very I, I haven't seen that scene but it felt very helpless and vulnerable especially after that uh scene it was a very intense scene with julian when we yeah. filmed that um the the fight where things got very hairy very fast 
What a bastard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not Julian. Right. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> um, yeah, that was really intense. So, yeah. So it was, it's interesting that Hannah made this sort of, made this deal with someone like that, that she could do that, that she thought she could sort of be in control because she's, she's she needs a little control in her life, I would say. I think so. I mean, look, I think when you're desperate, though, anything anything like that is going to seem like a way out. And I think she try I think she tries to fully commit to things. Yeah. And um, I think she wanted to convince herself that this was going to be good. Yeah, uh, seven hundred million dollars. You know. Yeah, uh, and you know maybe she can get used to it, given that she doesn't really have too many options. But um, yeah, I think in the end she uh, she has to <laughs> have it her way, and if she can't deal with something, then it's uh, it's got to go. Yeah, quite frankly. Yeah, and it went. Yeah, <laughs> he went, and it was fun that Dexter then got to step in and be be a help. You know, help the person that even at that moment you could sense that he cared deeply. Right. Yeah. It's the unconventional Prince Charming coming to the rescue in, a, in an unconventional way, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll take care of the body. <laughs> That's right. Oh, ah, God. love. <laughs> oh. Which then uh, puts Hannah with Dexter. Right. Which yeah. then causes a bit of a relationship shift yeah. with Deborah and Hannah. Yes. Yeah. Which, is, which has been really interesting. To yeah. see this this version of Deborah as opposed to the the other version of Deborah that was like I'm going to get her at all costs. Right, right. Yeah, I mean that that was a really. I still feel it's it's. I mean, I feel awkward about it. Hannah feels awkward about it. The Hannah in me sure. feels awkward about it still. But I think that's how, and that's how we left it. Yeah. You know. Um, wait, has that? Well, that yeah, the, that's been in by, this episode by, by eleven. By eleven, there is. Uh, a bit of a rapprochement between the two of them, right? Right. I mean, is that where we... I'm too scared to say because I'm mixed up. I'm getting my two episodes mixed up. Well, let's, well, let's go back a little bit then and, and talk about uh, that great sort of... I wouldn't call it a date, but it was oh. when Dexter <laughs> made this excuse that uh, there are people after you. This guy, Clayton, a U.S. Marshal, is on the hunt for you, and Elway is on the hunt for you, and my sister sort of set something in, in motion that's not so good with, the, with these two people after you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you better come, he says, you better come with me to yeah. go, because i gotta go, I got to go find Zach, because Zach has gone off the rails and killed somebody, killed, right. you know, killed Cassie. Right. Um, and it was this great sort of date. They go to a hotel, they, <laughs> everything, oh. yeah, 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 when they're all hunting Zach. Remember that? I know it seems like such a long time ago. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to put my pieces together. Yeah, so yeah, wait, yeah. the the one where where we have our not is that the, is that where we have our special scene? Uh, no. no, 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 no. That that I'm so mixed up. I know it's okay. Which wait, what <laughs> are you was, talking about? This is this is the moment. This is uh, this is when Dexter goes to Hannah and he says, you know, you're sort of hiding out. I think at a hotel at that point, and he says, you should come with me because uh, I have to go to. Uh, Forget where it was in my in, uh, outside Miami. I have to go get Zach because Zach has just I think my, oh that's my guy right. Zach has gone off the rails. And it's that's, that's sort right. of weird family moment. That's uh, right, and which in ends the hotel with, room. Yeah, yeah. The two of you sitting in a hotel room. It's covered in plastic. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> She's sort of like, remember the last time? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. And then and then of course that was that's the run in with, uh, with, with Deb. Yeah, where we sort of have it out and lay it out. And, uh, yeah, that was an intense scene too because she's got a gun on you. And, right, right. Yeah, on Hannah. But ha- I mean, it's the the win over is interesting because it's it's about uh, it's about Dexter and it's about both loving Dexter and we both don't want to hurt him and so yeah. we better not kill each other because <laughs> <laughs> it'll hurt Dexter. because it'll hurt Dexter and <laughs> I mean it's yeah it's it's a very it's a good argument. Intense sort of thing to place one's trust on. Yeah. It's sort of, it, we were, we're heavily relying on Dexter to keep loving us, really, in order for <laughs> us both to survive in each other's company, right? That might be the therapy thing you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might right? need, yeah, because Deb's not happy about it. She's like, fine, go. And then there's that great moment when, when Zach and Dexter come walking in and she's like, who the f- are you? I know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and then there's the the one of our favorite moments in the room when uh, 
it was uh, Hannah and Dexter and Zach in the back seat driving back to Miami. This little, this strange family together, this yes. killer family. And he's like, are we there yet? Yeah. Yeah. That is really one of your favorite moments. It was just such a sweet little moment in that episode. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And that, but then you get to meet the, uh, or Hannah gets to meet the matriarch of the, this new matriarch with, with uh, Vogel. Right. Who is so, uh, yeah, I, I, her response to Hannah is uh, interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember on the day, I'm not sure how it's going to be cut, if these little pieces are going to be kept in, but there was some funny looks, <laughs> yeah. looks exchanged. It's all there. <laughs> yeah, oh, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah, between Vogel and Hannah, and she makes some... Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sure you guys had fun with that one, writing that little bit about uh, Hannah eating a lot. Uh <laughs> <laughs> because I eat a lot, right? Is that, I mean, is that where it came from? No. It's, 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 well, Dexter eats a lot, and we just sort of figure. Hannah eats a lot. Hannah would, too, Look, and that's another thing why they're perfect. I'll, I'll say one, <laughs> They unashamedly eat. I'll say one thing. You, you guys are not the first set of writers to make fun of the fact that I like to eat <laughs> and then put it into the character <laughs> that likes to eat, too. I did eat, actually, that day that we were sitting around the dinner table eating that shepherd's pie. Yeah. I ate... An entire shepherd's pie well done. to myself because I kept eating the prop food <laughs> after, you know, they called cut. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think I might have been in the bad books for that one because yeah. I was eating the prop food. And then maybe we were almost running out of shepherd's pie, too, because I kept eating it. <laughs> um, yeah. But it worked out. It worked out. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it made Vogel's line easier for her to say. Yeah. Because she, you know. Witnessed me eating a lot. <laughs> Devouring <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, uh, Clayton. Actually, you never really had a scene with Clayton up to, through at 811. So. No. No, it's always... Because Dexter finally uh, convinces Deb that <clears throat> the only safe place, the last place that the U.S. Marshal Service or Ellie would ever think to look for Hannah would be at Deborah's place. Right, right. Which Deborah wasn't exactly happy about initially. No, and then there's that very awkward scene where, uh, well, I keep uh, Hannah keeps trying to sort of play nice and yeah. kind of in a way impress uh, Deborah, I guess, by keeping the house clean and cooking for her. And <laughs> they have that odd date with the yeah. uh, which Deborah finally kind of reluctantly agrees to sit down and have some chicken, <laughs> have some chicken and salad with Hannah. <laughs> um, I love that line. Something about, you know, a, a killer in my house eating a salad <laughs> just makes it sound so normal. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun scene. It was, it was a fun, not, not that I ever think that, not that I ever think that Deborah and Hannah will become besties. No. Like, I think Deb sort of is reconciled to it. And I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, do you think, do you think Hannah uh, likes Deb at all or is it? I just, think just, she, I think there's a level of respect right. for her in terms of in terms of how she, how loyal she is to Dexter. But on the flip side, I think there's a level of disrespect for the fact that Deborah thought she was so in, in Hannah's mind, sort of like high and mighty and above right. above it all, above all the the killing and above all the you know the stuff that would the stuff that is illegal that, that Hannah does because, you know, I think in Hannah's mind, she, she was looking at Deborah thinking, well, you're just a big fat hypocrite cause you've right. done it all too. And you're exactly like us and, you know, just shut up and get with the program kind of thing. I mean, but by the time they ate together, it did feel like Deborah understood that. I that, think, yeah, I know. I am a hypocrite and you know, there's a, there's a way we can get along. Yeah, yeah I, and I and I think they they had a common understanding after that. After they, yeah, I mean it was never really fully yeah. discussed. But I think that's the point: is that you yeah. can't. Th those two girls are not going to really sit there and discuss <laughs> it and flesh it out. Yeah, like when when uh, when and if Deb comes to visit <clears throat> in uh, in Argentina, if in fact Dexter and Hannah make it <clears throat> to Argentina, I think there will still be awkward visits. Yes, I think that would be very awkward visits. Your sister's coming? Oh. <laughs> you have to be like the in-laws. <laughs> uh, in one, combined in one person. 
Yeah. And I think another sort of important scene is that is the one where um, I think it's in the letter. Or what were you going to say? No, I was going to say that one. Well, I just uh, the the special scene. I keep calling mm-hmm. it the special scene, but where we think, uh, well, at one point Dexter is is I think before we no. Well, anyway, at one point Dexter is is planning on um, helping Hannah leave right. alone. Right. And then we have the you know the seaplane and the hotel and that scene where. He's giving her the passport, and we think it's over. And yeah, that scene I have it's seen. Beautiful, actually. it's right? uh, It turned out more beautiful than than I, than I thought it would. Actually, the scene leading up to, you know, when they finally yeah. go at it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's very, it's it's romantic. Because Dexter's been through the ringer at that point. Like he lost, I think he lost Zach at that point, and right. Right, I think so. Yeah, Gosh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's, there's so many pieces. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. hard to but, follow. But that moment at the seaplane was yeah. stra- straight out of like the Notebook or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, <laughs> I know. With my flowing pastel purple shawl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it was pastel purple. <laughs> but then, and and that embrace, and Dexter just can't. He makes that announcement. He can't live. He can't live without Hannah. Yeah. And and it feels like would you agree that Hannah at that point can't live without Dexter? Oh yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they have a need for one another at this point. A yeah. need, a love, a want. And Dexter makes that announcement that he's going to go away with after that. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, I mean, wow. It's like it's it's amazing. I mean, I yeah, I mean, I would love to see well, first we have to see how uh, how how the series ends, right. but if they <laughs> one more episode if they make it there uh you know like i was saying how does that even play out you know cuz there's so many <laughs> it's such a fantasy that they're planning yeah. it really is such a fantasy i mean nobody does that that's well that's crazy to yeah. do something like that and to actually follow through plan to follow through on something like that and, and it's a little and, bit like how, what she did when she was 15 with more money with more money. Well, yeah. you mean going on the run? Well, yeah, I mean, on the run from the law, I guess. I mean, I, well, but I mean, it's a little different because yeah. they're like planning on settling down and yeah. finding and just making a life of it, really. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Where hopefully no one bothers them. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the two of them won't stand out in Argentina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hannah with her long blonde hair and her hot pink dresses. <laughs> yeah. Walking around with Harrison. Yeah. And what do you think of that, uh, the relationship between Hannah and Harrison? Yeah, uh, it's very, it's very sweet. He, yeah. he's found his, you know, mom, I guess, in, yeah. in Hannah. And it's, I mean, it just adds one sort of one more element to, to, to the good side of the fantasy of why it is going to work and, and why it it's necessary, and yeah. why why there's and, and and it adds to the love of you know ha- between Hannah and Dexter, but the fact that there's Dexter's son involved who has has developed love and attachment to Hannah, yeah. you know it's it's quite beautiful in, in sort of a really sick way, you know you know because because <laughs> yeah. look at look at these two do. people because it doesn't feel like Dexter's gonna suddenly stop killing that urge. The urge is still hanging around. Right, yeah. right. I mean, even though he has, uh, he's he's found his emotional side in, in these last two seasons almost. Yeah. It's like Dexter's finally sort of connecting with, uh, with, with his feelings a little bit more and falling in love with Hannah. I think rocked his world a little yeah. bit and... Well, a little bit, <laughs> a <Completely>. big bit. <laughs> uh, Rocked it or wrecked it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave that for the audience to judge. Um, but yeah, so I. Well, but, it does that though. I mean, it does. It 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 messes you up a little bit, and and hopefully you come out better because of it. But it, yeah, but it does. <laughs> yeah. When Wait. suddenly you care about someone else more, and and to suddenly, do you think Hannah is going to be okay as a mom? Lots of people have been asking. Uh, Hannah, as a mom? I think, look, I think the natural instinct is there for her. I think yeah. she, I think it's all 
she wanted. And, you know, going back to season seven and that scene where we find out that it was, you know, she, she got rid of her husband. She poisoned yeah. the, the old husband because he was the one that, when Hannah got pregnant, that he wanted, you know, her to have an abortion and get rid of the baby. and Because he wanted fun times serial killer Hannah. Yeah, and, yeah. and that really upset her. I think So I think Harrison, you know, having this natural affection for Hannah is deeply heartwarming for Hannah. Yeah. You know, putting aside all this, you know, weird dysfunctional crap that <laughs> Hannah and Dexter have been involved in, I, I think, you know, I think that motherly instinct is genuinely there. Yeah. But, I mean, she was know. a she was a she grew things, nurtured things. Right. But, I mean, it's, oh yeah, 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 when you look at that too, of course, yeah. So, but given the circumstances, you know, I think you know it, it's uh, it's human nature that your past and your circumstances are always going to come creeping back in and haunting you for your entire yeah. life. So I think it for Hannah, it, it would become sort of like a management plan. I'm talking like a therapist here. No, no, it's, it's a man- good. management plan of how to <laughs> manage your circumstances and yeah. all the stuff going on in her head from all the stuff she's done. Because it definitely feels like um, Harrison loves Hannah. Absolutely, he cares. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, it, and it feels like over the course of seasons, ever since Rita, Rita, you know, died in a bathtub, that he's been looking for. Uh, a mother of some sort all this time. Yeah. So, and what so a nice. great... Uh, Jaden, he does such a great job. Isn't he amazing? What a smart kid. I've seen that kid correct, uh, like on set, <laughs> when uh, other actors, adult actors, have missed a line. He's he right. said, your line was actually this. The it's best. amazing. The best thing is when someone accidentally swears really loudly. <laughs> and he goes, yesterday... <laughs> Yesterday, someone swore. We someone said the f word. I think it was Michael, and and he went oh, and did this big long, <laughs> put his hands up in the air, it was just like he'd won something or like he kicked a goal. It was this, it was like a win for him. <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, yeah, he's a smart kid. Yeah, very smart. Smart kid, Harrison. <clears throat> um, so we get to eleven, and and we're at this point where. Uh, Dexter is feeling very emotional and angry and feeling his sort of uh, vengeance, this new sort of feeling of vengeance because Saxon killed Dr. Vogel in 10. Mm-hmm. Um, so Dexter has this, this sort of dual monster going on within him. I guess one's not a monster, but he wants to run away with Hannah, desperately with Hannah and Harrison and just leave all this horrible crap behind. Mm-hmm. And then he's got this drive that Hannah understands to uh to kill Saxon. Right. And yet, in the midst of all that, we've got Clayton and we've got US Marshal Clayton who really wants to catch Hannah. Yeah. And we got Elway who really wants to collect one hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Uh which leads to a great little conflict between Deborah, Dexter and Hannah, right? right. You want to talk about that scene? That uh... another happy little family. So many happy little <laughs> happy sort of family situations in, yeah. in this. Uh, well, happy. I'm, I'm in yeah, quotation yeah, yeah. marks. Uh, yeah, that's a really interesting moment because we see Deborah sticking up for Hannah right. for the first time, and Hannah uh, Deborah is encouraging Dexter to leave immediately with Hannah, go to a hotel spend the night and then get on that airplane the next day right. because they have those tickets booked. And let the cops take care of Saxon. Right. It's like Dexter, you know, the, everyone's gonna, everyone knows what he did and he's going to go down. Right, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but, you know, Dexter's, can't Dexter it. can't do it. It's so complicated. There's so many different uh, directions that everyone is getting pulled in. Well, Dexter mainly yeah. is getting pulled in so many different directions. Because there's a little bit of fear. This is something we talked about in the room, and I think it's on the screen too. There's like a little bit of fear in Dexter that if I do run away with Hannah and uh, and I don't kill Saxon, and then what? Then sort of what am I? You know? If if suddenly, what, what if this, if I'm able to tamp down this incredible need, mm. it's no longer a dark passenger, but this incredible need to kill Saxon, and I'm able to actually successfully run away mm. with her. Does that just make me un- – it's like Leanne of Goodfellas. Does it make me just uh, a normal schlub right. like guy? Right. He's, uh, he's on the edge of an identity crisis yeah. in, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants both, but it's uh, it's tough. Right. But it, he, he is the type of man that uh, 
that will uh, will will try and accomplish. Well, he he likes to usually accomplish everything, doesn't he? He likes yeah. to have everything. Yeah, you know, be in control. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and he can't let he can't let Saxon go. Yeah, yeah, which is very sad yeah. and nerve wracking. For Hannah, I think the whole situation is absolutely nerve-wracking to be leaving, first of all, under the pressure of having these, you know, being a wanted fugitive. Yeah. and Storm approaching, there's hurricanes, Hurricane Laura is coming toward them. Yeah, the stakes are incredibly, incredibly high, and, uh, and, we, and we leave the episode on an incredibly high stake, too, with Elway showing up at the airport, which is just going to potentially ruin everything bum 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 mm-hmm. yep and now people gotta wait till episode 812 oh my gosh yeah. I can't believe it's the last I feel so privileged to have <laughs> made it this far and to be you know at, at made it to, to 811 yeah I'll say 811 because we don't know what right. happens but it's such a privilege to to sort of go out has it been fun being Hannah in between you know, after after season seven, you you go walking around in public or whatever. Do people are people like, oh my god, you're Hannah? Yeah, it's usually and it's uh, Hannah and the, and and uh, Chuck. What was your name again, Chuck again? Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's very much Hannah now. It's yeah. uh, it, it's very much Hannah. It's usually people yell out either Dexter and do like a <laughs> fist pump or Hannah and then fist pump. <laughs> So I got a lot of that in New York when I was uh, when I was doing my my Broadway oh, that's right. play. How was that? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, I wish I could have seen it. That was that was hard work, but boy, was that uh, rewarding and amazing. How many days a week was that? What was that what was the play? Golden Boy. We Golden did Boy. eight shows a week. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and it was a three hour show. Oh my goodness, and those seats. Mm. I tell you what, they need to do something about seats in, uh, on Broadway. <laughs> Every play I've ever been to, they're 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 meant for tiny people. They really are. I have to say, I I sat well, you know, because I hadn't seen a Broadway play uh, before. I, I mean, I did my one, and then I saw my first Broadway play ever once I've finished right. my show, and so oh wow, uh, and so I, I remember sitting in those seats, going, "What is going on?" And I'm, you know, I'm five ten, and I got long yeah. legs, and I can hardly my knees are like all the way in indented into the back of the yeah. seat in front of me, yeah. And plus, with those coats, somehow you yeah. have to manage the the big winter coats, and you stuff them, you know, God knows where. Yeah, it's a whole situation. Yeah, I like movie theaters. <laughs> 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 I love plays too, but I, I don't know. Oh, it's a little more comfortable. Yeah. Was it so? Uh, and you uh, won an award and everything, right? Didn't you? I, d- I got a th- yeah, uh, yeah a theater world award yeah. actually. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you got to return here. Did did the show end just end so you're able to come back, or did you leave it for somebody else, the Golden Boy? Did somebody else no, the it? no the show ended. The it was ended. only it was a limited run. Okay. Yeah. So I was only in New York for four months. It worked out. Life. It worked out. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I, I got to know the city <laughs> for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, it worked out perfectly because it was in between season seven and yeah. eight of Dexter. Well, we were uh, extremely excited that you were able to come back mm. over here to sort of see what would happen with Dexter and Hannah. Yes. Yeah. I was too. <laughs> it's nice. Is it nice sort of slipping into Hannah again? Yeah, it. It's easier, yeah, because I, you know, feel like all the hard establishing work was done in season seven. So right. now it's sort of going with with the flow and the storylines, yeah. and um, yeah. But I, yeah, I got. I just feel so lucky to have been part of this show and to have done so many. You know, you guys wrote so many great. You know pockets of it was fun epic drama for yeah. hannah you know all these little th- even even just doing a seizure you know and yeah. season seven was something new for me um that the love making scenes you yeah. know there's a lot a lot of different things and then we and then we stuck in some some hotel rooms too yeah sorry about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> After, so some some uh sometimes we were breaking out in the room we we you know we'd have the hannah store and, and we were like Shoot, man, we've got a, we've got three scenes and all of them are in a hotel. <laughs> I know, I've had so many oh. hotel rooms. <laughs> the art department was complaining too. Well, how many more hotels are you gonna have? <laughs> like, uh, I know. I where do you hide somebody out? I don't know. Oh. It's pretty anonymous, but uh, you handled it well. It was always great. I think everybody 
is rooting big time for Dexter and Hannah, which is which is an amazing feat considering who Hannah is and what she has done. Because it's, mm. I mean, Sal Price and that you know, there's there's a lot of people. There's she a lot of haters. <laughs> oh yeah, are there? Are there people? Well, there? no, I mean, I mean, in the show, oh, like the Sal show. Yeah, Price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's the world's haters. against him. I'm sure, I'm sure that the, in the real world, there's some haters too. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we won't talk about them. No, no, we only talk about the lovers. That's right. Of Hannah. And Dexter. <laughs> but it's, it says a lot about what you and Michael do, what you you and Michael have brought on screen that that could make America sort of, or, you know, the fans of the show root on that mm. these two get away, that these two, you know, despite anything that they may deserve, despite the fact that Dexter killed so many people and wrecked his sister's life and killed innocent people and caused the death of his, you know, his wife and, I mean, horrible stuff that we're able, that we're able to forgive them. And that that's because of what you guys have brought. Mm. You know, it's beautiful. It's great. It is. Thank you so much. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why Von Stryker? <laughs> Yvonne Strahovski. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for a great season. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So emotional. Yeah. And on today's the, you know, we're we're recording this on the last day of shooting. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sad. Yeah, it's very, be... ner- it's nerve wracking and sad and everything at once. Oh, but it's great. It is. Yeah. It is. It's wonderful. And it's new beginnings, you know, it's yep. something that's coming to an end. Uh, get any movies coming out soon or anything? You got some stuff that you're, uh, or you just been Broadway in this. I, I yeah. actually have a movie coming out in January. So okay. I'll be comic con is going to be a lot of promotional, a lot of press stuff for right. I Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. With uh, Bill Nye, Aaron Eckhart, okay. and myself. So why don't you keep an eye out for I, Frankenstein? Yes. I'll be there. I'll go. It's going to be Thank in 3D, you. too. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> She's dancing. I am. Yeah, I, I just realized I started doing this dance and nobody can see me doing it's it. It's the 3D dance. <laughs> uh. I wish you guys could have seen it. It was great. <laughs> Maybe you'll see it night. Maybe we'll do a little, uh, a little video to accompany the uh, <laughs> the dance, the, the podcast. <laughs> so keep an eye out. Uh, thank you again for coming in. A twelve, monkey in a box. A eleven. A eleven. Sorry, I'm it's a, early. I'm a dork. <laughs> it's very early. All right. Well, there it is. Uh, the penultimate episode of uh, the Dexter Wrap Up Podcast. Uh, it's going to happen one more time, so I'm not even going to say what I normally say because it really is. It's not going to happen again and again. It's not going to happen one more time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>